women need to wake the hell up. They're delusional. I was an atheist, but once I met you, I know there is a God, and you are my God. Damn it, I'm glad you're doing this. Maybe it'll inspire other people to put their feet down and say, enough, I'm done, no. This is going to be the theme to this program. Accept me as I are, or get the F out of my house. My ex-girlfriend, she said the biggest mistake I ever made was introducing you to Tom Lackett. It was the biggest gift that she ever gave me. Anybody out there wondering, oh, man, I don't know, is this going to be disruptive, life-changing? You're right. It's going to be both. But guess what? The sooner you cut out the cancer, the quicker you heal. My husband crumbled. We've been married for a couple years, been together for 10 years. Once we had kids, we stopped celebrating, you know, Valentine's and uh, came home from work and found some flowers and some stupid teddy bear thing that I'm just going to throw away. And I sent him on his way that night and spent the night with my kids because I was upset with him that he did not follow your 101. You're the father, you're the teacher, but you know what they should call you? They should make you the, how do they call Nostradamus? Oh, you're talking about being uh, like a, a predictor. Yes, man, because every prophet man has been coming through. How is this possible, man? I don't think by giving them driver's license has anything to do with immigration status. I think it would be best to have them registered. So when a, when a guy walks into the DMV and he says, my name is uh, Bin Laden, first name Osama, you would rather have him have a driver's license. That, that's, right, at least you know so you, that are all right, So you would like Osama bin Laden to have a driver's license? See, you're just trying to... Speak I'm asking you. Around. I'm asking you if you would like uh, Osama bin Laden to have a driver's license. I would rather have him have a driver's license than not to have right, one. And it's your belief that Barack Obama would give Osama bin Laden a driver's license? To have him registered and, and teach him how to properly drive, yes. Hello. Hey, Tom, it's Ira. How are Ira. you? I'm okay, Ira. I just want to say I was... How uh, old are you, Ira? I'm uh, 48. Okay, because there's no Iras under the age of 40. There just aren't. Well, what can I tell you? Somehow that name uh, slipped out of the uh, consciousness. Yeah. Are you an accountant? No, I'm actually a designer. Okay, just check it. Hello, Tom? Yes. Oh, this is Mario. Yes. Uh, first of all, your show is the best. Um, I'm from Mexico. And uh, this is pretty much the best show I have ever heard in my life. My English is not that good, but with your show, I learned a lot of English. Oh, so tell us some of the English phrases you learned here. Um, I'm the bitch. <laughs> and and uh, uh, pretty much just phrases like that. I just practice almost every day with your phrases, and uh, and I really love it. What I'm trying to say, if I can finish... Don't tell me how to run this class. I'm uh, I, telling you how to run it. I'm no, just giving I you will let you finish. Out. I will let you finish when I am ready to let you finish. And you will okay. not tell me when to finish or when okay. to start talking. Okay. Now, you will continue when I tell you you can continue. Absolutely. Okay. So, is that it? That's it. Now you can continue. Wow, that was pretty amazing. I like that. That was like my hand hitting your ass. Excuse me? Never mind. Go ahead. I'm sorry. From a fallout shelter in Hollywood, it's the Tom Likas Show. Oh, my God. And now, and now here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. It's a very wacky day in L.A. 
First of all, they have shut down Hollywood Boulevard. If you don't live in L.A., I'll kind of give you the the lay of the land here. Sunday night, uh, the Oscar broadcast will be coming from the Kodak Theater on Hollywood Boulevard. And uh, in advance of that, they shut down Hollywood Boulevard for several days. So they can construct the stands where those big, fat Midwestern uh, morons like to wave into TV cameras. Uh, so those hogs will all have a place to congregate and fawn over George Clooney. <laughs> and they, of course, have to lay out the red carpet and uh, put out the lighting and the sound. And I know there's a number of rehearsals going on out there. And the result is that... Uh, Traffic has been forced off Hollywood Boulevard between La Brea and Highland. And that is like, you know, a major urban center, for those of you who don't live in L.A. And so that traffic has been forced onto other local streets. So as it is, other streets in the area like Sunset Boulevard, Fountain Avenue, Franklin Avenue... North-South streets like La Brea and Highland are just jam-packed with traffic. Now, that's where it all starts, okay? And it's been this way for days. Traffic in Hollywood has been a bitch. You think your wife is a bitch, you want to see the traffic in Hollywood. That's a bitch. And then on top of all of that, as if that weren't enough fun... Living in L.A. is usually a lot more fun than this, so let me just say. As if that were not enough fun for one week, we had this bizarre pattern of sudden, very heavy rain showers that have resulted in flash flooding of streets all over town. But this is particularly bad in Hollywood, where the sewers... They could use a little Drano out there. If there's anybody within the sound of my voice at the Department of Water and Power, can we uh, call off the lactation specialist for a while and get them to empty out some of the sewers? The sewers are backed up. And driving here today was, let's just say, an obstacle course. It was nuts. I was driving in water on streets like Highland, Island Avenue. I was driving all the side streets of Hollywood trying to avoid the traffic uh, spillover from the Oscars. So I was on like Willoughby Avenue and uh, Romaine Street and a bunch of other streets in Hollywood. They are flooded to the gills. I mean, people are hydroplaning out there. I mean, in L.A., we don't know how to drive in the rain anyway, but this is not rain. This is flooding. This is floods. So you've got traffic, you've got floods, you've got rain. The sun is out at the same time in some areas, like right here on the movie lot. The sun is out and it's pouring rain. Unless you're listening to us on tape, in which case the sun was out and it was pouring rain at one point. Let's get that all in. But the bottom line is that uh, this is not L.A. as we know it. You know, You know L.A. is palm trees and sunshine and... And Panorama City <laughs> and Roach Coaches. But this is a whole different L.A. Just a whole different L.A. Bay, bay. So getting here was just a big pain in the ass. But it is uh, nonetheless Friday. And by the way, I've gotten to work. You still have to get home from work, right? That's why you're here in most cases. And on Friday, we have wide open telephones where anything goes, anything at all. We can talk about anything that's on your mind. We can talk about some of the things we talked about this week. Uh, the things that got the most attention this week on the show, we did, uh, as you heard some in the uh, montage at the beginning of the hour. Uh, Chicks on Politics was very popular this week. It stretched to two hours. Talking about why young women favor Barack Obama over Hillary Clinton for president. And letting the chicks call in and wax philosophical about uh, politics. You heard some of that. And the other one that not only got a lot of uh, response, but a number of you sent this article from Newsweek magazine in, in advance of the show, was about a woman named Amy Sutherland, whose book was called 
what Shamu taught me about a happy marriage. This is the woman who wanted you to use the techniques of an animal trainer to train your husband or boyfriend. A lot of people upset about that. And we did the postmortem on Valentine's Day, and a number of you followed my instruction and got happily laid, which I think is fantastic, taking advantage of some of you women at your lowest point. It's just great. So any of those things or any of the other things we talked about this week are fair game. We can talk about some of the things we didn't talk about. We didn't talk about the Oscars. You know why? Seriously speaking, except for you few freaks, how many people saw the movies nominated for Best Picture? You know, let me just say this. We didn't talk about the Oscars at all this week, and here we are in the belly of the beast. We're coming to you from a movie lot. But uh, let's face it. There are less and less compelling reasons to watch the Oscars. I looked at the L.A. Times yesterday, and there was a graph showing the viewership of the Oscars that peaked the year Titanic won Best Picture. Any time a movie that does well with chicks and gay men uh, is up for Best Picture, <laughs> there's, there's a big audience for that. Like Titanic or Shakespeare in Love. But over the recent years, the numbers on the Oscars have been going down, and I'm going to tell you why I think that is. At one time, all there was was the Oscars. And the dirty little secret about the Oscars that I think is now becoming more obvious is that most of the people who watch the Oscars don't watch the Oscars to see who won the Academy Awards. Most of the people who watch the Oscars watch to see what outfits people are wearing, they, they watch you to see hot actors. You know, the female demographic and the gay male demographic, that is the, the target demographic of the Oscars. They are now watching, you know, the E! Channel's pre-show or the TV Guide Channel's pre-show. Or whoever else is doing a pre-show. I guess even ABC does a pre-show. They, they broadcast the Oscars and they have a pre-show. So now you can see all of the outfits without watching those boring award ceremonies about movies that nobody has seen anyway. I mean, seriously. You know, for most of us, Juno is an email service from the 90s. It's not a movie. And then you got that movie George uh, Clooney was in. What's that movie called? (laughs) Right, that's my point. George Clooney played a lawyer in a movie. Don't call him with the answer. I couldn't care less. Anyway, uh, I think nobody saw this movie. A few film critics, a few film freaks. The people in L.A. who think of themselves as, you know, sophisticated consumers of cinema, they saw this movie. Oh, it's called, I know what it's called, wait. It's called Michael Clayton. That's what it's called. You seen Michael Clayton art? Huh? Gary? Michael Clayton? Starring George Clooney? Up for Best Picture? Seen it? No. Dean J. D'Amelio, he's heard of it, I'll bet, but I'm sure he hasn't seen it. Probably thinks it's in black and white. <laughs> Dean would never waste his time. Now, Dean's 10 best films of all time list includes Goodfellas, but not Citizen Kane or Casablanca. That That tells you everything you need to know. I mean, seriously, which list has got to be the worst, Dean's or Leo Quinones? Which one? <laughs> Wouldn't you love to see, like, they have one of those film seminars, like the, the, the American Film Institute, maybe they hold it, like, the Egyptian theater on stage, you know, and you've got all these distinguished directors who are 87 years old, and then you put Dean D'Amelio and Leo Quinones on stage. The film freak and and, and the freak. (laughs) And uh, have them discuss cinema. And you'd have Dino going, oh, yeah, dude, old school. That's like one of the ten best movies. I think it's one of the two best. That and Goodfellas. (laughs) Oh, and don't forget Fast Times at Ridgemont High. (laughs) That's right. 
You know, and Leo will think that uh, Van Wilder 4 was one of the 10 best movies of all time. Going straight to DVD April 29th. Line six. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. Leo is calling in. Leo, of course, the film freak. On 97.1 KLSX Free FM. What are we calling it this week? Is it KLSX or Free FM? I like going on 97.1 on the FM talk station, Tom, because that's what we are. That's what we are. Yeah, I brother, and uh, I couldn't agree with you more, man. I've been doing this movie show for nine years, and you literally, you must be a movie snob to see the top five films nominated. I'll tell you what they are off the top of my head. Uh, it's Atonement, Juno, Michael Clayton, No Country for Old Men, and There Will Be Blood. And if anyone's seen all five of those films... I grant you movie snobness. I'd like to know how many have seen two of those films. Absolutely. You know, uh, Juno was cute, had some snappy dialogue, but you know what? It, it, it's made $130 million at the box office. It's got a mass appeal. But literally, these all these movies are under the radar of normal people, Tom. There will be blood, there, there will be blood at the next shareholder meeting at whatever studio released that. Yeah, that, there will be blood. Great performance. Daniel Day Lewis locked him in for best actor, but the movie is has made thirty three million dollars, which by Hollywood standards, Tom, you know, is pretty much fair to Midland. You know what I'm saying? I think the Academy Awards are pretty much inviting the, the same thing that happened in the music industry years ago when Dick Clark came up with the American Music Awards. Because every year the Grammy Awards were won by Henry Mancini and Arturo Toscanini and every classical music and uh, Muzak purveyor. And so somebody came up with an award show where, you know, the music people actually bought and listened to uh, was given awards. And, and it became more popular than the Grammys and it forced the Grammys into the 20th century. Yeah. Where they continue to reside, I think. And uh, I think the same thing is happening with the Oscars. I think uh, it's getting to the point where somebody, I don't know if Dick Clark is up to the task, but somebody uh, really should create an award show uh, like the American Music Awards for movies. Well, what I'm, what I'm seeing is... Leo, this is a gig for you. Yeah, well, what I, what I, don't, what I hate about the gig... Is you know I, I don't mind doing the red carpet bloodbath. I, I I can do all that. I've done it for twenty years. But what it's gotten to, Tom, on some of these networks is, is you have an IFB earpiece and someone telling you in your earpiece, ask Tom Hanks which way is Nicole Richie driving on the one thirty four, and do you care? Now nobody wants to ask that. I don't want to ask that question, Tom. You know I just want to sit it out. You know it, it's too gossipy these days. So Leo, are you working on Sunday? You know what? At the advice of my manager, Marky Costello, she's amazing. She said, Leo, sit it out. You know what? We're going to go for class and not crass. You've seen the shows that. where the people are uninformed, they, they just sound stupid, and the, and the stars are uncomfortable talking to them. I don't want any part of that, Tom. You are not coming back to the red carpet until Van Wilder is nominated for Best Picture. Will you leave me alone about that? Hey, listen, I've always wanted to say this. Will you blow me up? Huh? You know I will. It's wide open telephones on the Tom Likas show on this Friday. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Tom, 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 Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. I just have a problem with you calling women dumb bitches. I don't see where you get off. Well, I only do it when they are dumb bitches. Yeah, but it's just such a derogatory term. You cannot find any other words in your vocabulary just to express how you feel. Oh, yeah. Dumb whores, uh, stupid broads. There's plenty of words in my vocabulary. You're not even I'm a, Why are you on I'm, the radio? This is I'm Over the hill sluts. I mean, I'm, I'm like a thesaurus. I got plenty of words. It's the Dumb Like It Show. It's the Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. Wide open telephones. Let's go to your calls here. Robert on the Tom Likas Show. Hello, Robert. Hey, Tom. What's going on, man? Not much. How are you doing? I'm doing okay. Yeah, uh, me and my friend were heading to Marengo, Tom, and I called in just to see what your opinion is, what you think we should play. I am not a big casino gambler. Um, I go to casinos and I, I go to lounges and I spend money. 
Yeah. Uh, but do is, what do you think is a good way to approach a girl over there in casinos without spending the cash, like you said? Well, the great thing about being in a casino uh -huh. is that uh, people of all walks of life walk in, so you can be anybody from anywhere. Okay. Now, uh, do you have a cell phone? Yeah. What's your area code? It's A18. Change it. Change it? Why? Get three your mouth while on the air. Oh, my Lord. Is that, is that not good or what? Um, here's what's not good. You want her to think you have money. Oh, okay. Unless your name is Michael Jackson. <laughs> if you live in 818, you probably don't have a lot of cashola. Um, that's true. So just get like a prepaid phone. Just have a 310 area code. You, any cell phone, you can put a 310 area code on it. You don't have to accept your local area code. Oh, yeah, that's true. They ask you what area code you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. So you need a phone number with 310. All right. All right um, and one more favor, bro. Can you take me out Kobe style? I certainly can. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Robert, on the Tom Likas Show, hello. Hey, Tom, what's up? How are you? Doing okay. Hey, I just wanted to uh, talk about the situation you had. I think you talked about it Wednesday or Thursday about the film companies, like, moving into your, like, neighborhood and right. filming. Um, I kind of had the same thing. This happened about uh, about three months ago on, um, well, my area is a dead-end street. It's in the area of Lincoln Heights. And um, it sucked because, like, it was from one day to the next. Like, we all woke to, like, cameras and lights and stuff. And um, my sister was living with us at the time, and she was pretty upset because uh, nobody came around with a permit or anything, you know, because I guess they got to go around to sign one. No, they don't. Oh, they don't. That's what I found out through the process of this. Uh, can you believe this? In the city of Los Angeles, this is why you need to talk to your city councilman. I bet you don't even know who it is, right? I don't know who it is. You need to find all right, you need to find out who it is and you need to call because here's what's happening. Are you aware that film permits are automatically rubber stamped unless unless the LAPD comes in with a specific compelling reason to not issue the permit? Whoa, I was not aware of that. They make it look like they're getting your permission by asking you to sign a piece of paper. Uh -huh. But look carefully at what the piece of paper says. It says this is not a survey. Uh -huh. This is not to ask for your permission. Yes. We're just trying to find out what your concerns are. But So you uh -huh. tell them, well, gee, I'm concerned about traffic and parking and noise and people being here at 6 o'clock in the morning yeah, and people leaving garbage okay. on my front lawn. And you can say, oh, they, here's what they do. They take the survey. They go, well, thank you very much. We're going to take all that into consideration. And then they go film anyway. Yeah, because it sucks because we live like on a dead end street. And um, the parking's horrible as it is. And um, there was people, like, parked in a driveway, parked in the alley, and there was no way to go around. And, your um, neighbors have to get together and con contact your city councilman. Yeah, that's what we do. You did, have though, to like, start saying no to this stuff. Yeah, like, we got fed up, like, the third day because, like, they were getting mad because we were coming up our street during their film time, and we told them we live here, and they still had a fit about it. And um, what happened is, uh, like, uh, we, all the neighbors kind of united. And we kind of made a complaint. Everybody called the cops and stuff, and uh, they came, and immediately they shut it off because, uh, you know, it was being a, a big hassle. Like, I'm a college student, and um, I was like, I was going to class late just because they were filming. I couldn't get out of my house. Well, and, I have warned the people uh, right now who are going to film across the street from me yeah. that on the day of the shooting, all nine days, I'm planning on doing a little work on my house, a little sandblasting oh, yeah, that's man. gone on, done. Yeah. I've been thinking, well, you know, <laughs> I, I've been planning on doing stucco on one of the sides of my house, redoing the stucco. Yeah. And before you can start <laughs> putting on the stucco, you got to do a little sandblasting. Yeah, you got to do all that. Very slowly and carefully so you get it done right. Uh, also, a little jackhammering. You know, I live in the hills, and there's some uh, rock underfoot that we need to jackhammer. 
Uh, we're going to need to take out some wood. I got uh, some logs I'm going to put in the fireplace. So I need to split these. Going to yeah. use a, a saw, for, a circular saw for that. Yeah, man. Just be and, as noisy as possible. And, Don't let them and walk on your yard. You I know. can't tell for sure, but I. Every now and then, you ever have like the burglar alarm in your car kind of accidentally yeah, goes that's off? What I was thinking about all things you should have your alarm go off like every five minutes. Do you know how long it takes for the police to come when a car alarm goes off? No more yeah, than you, a minute, I guess. No, 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 no. <laughs> you know what happens when an alarm goes off? Does anybody yeah, ever yeah. call the police when the alarm goes off? People go, "Why doesn't that guy shut off his goddamn yeah, exactly. alarm?" Yeah. Nobody ever says, "Gee, maybe the car's being stolen." So I don't know. <laughs> Things happen, you know. So we have little yeah. uh, earth tremors and stuff. It's possible that my car alarm might start going off incessantly. <laughs> right about the time of the film. So they can come over and film if they want, but they're going to be wasting a lot of frames of footage. Yes, sir. Uh, because there's going to be... And by the way, then at night when I can't make any more noise, that's when the real fun begins. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because I'm going to rent one of these uh, spotlights, these searchlights they have, like for a, for a world premiere. Oh, cool, man. And I'm going to I'm gonna aim it right at the house where they're filming. <laughs> so there will be continuous light coming in. Yeah. Yeah, that's what it was. I mean, it was just a pestilence because they were uh, like the, the, the city of L.A. is turning us into vigilantes. And uh, exactly. I'm telling you, first do it the right way. Call your city councilman and tell them you're fed up. Yes, sir. And there need to be limits on this. Right, and cool, and huh? then and then when they ignore you, uh, then you have to take matters into your own hands by doing everything legally possible. And you are certainly entitled to do sandblasting or using a buzzsaw. And as I said, you know, many of my workers speak Spanish. They might want to listen to Pialine or Kukui while they're out there. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm going to make sure they've got nice, big, loudspeakers so they can hear every minute of those shows. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Tom. Well, thanks a lot for your call. I've been listening for about six months now. I'm trying to pick up that like if one on one. <laughs> Try making it work around school. Um, I was wondering if you could please take me out. I think you call it porno style. Followed by oh, a porno guy. style. Yes, we can do that. Here you go. Thank you, Tom. Porno style. There it is, porno style. Did we have that under listed under something else? Was that under Debbie Does Dallas or something? Debbie Does Dallas, yeah. He didn't know that's from Debbie Does Dallas. Debbie Does Dallas was a movie made 35 years ago. My God. It's also on Leo's 10 best list. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. My boyfriend's dad is listening to your whatever, and he is a good cop. He seriously is a good cop. And now my boyfriend is starting to listen to you. So I oh, think good. every guy that listens to you is a piece of crap. It's the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show at 1 800 5800. Tom, it's Jamie on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Jamie. Long time, first time, my friend. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I was wondering if you were going to actually be at the California Speedway Sunday. I am, again. You are. Yes. As I right. have been the last uh, five races, I believe. Very nice. That is, if weather permits. Well, uh, of course, if weather permits, and that's not looking good right now. No, it's not. It's uh, pretty dark right now, so we'll have to cross our fingers and see what happens. Yeah, because what do they do? Have the race on Monday? <laughs> I know. I guess they've done Holy that in the past, cow. I suppose. Yeah. Uh, boy, I, you know, I've seen that happen on TV in other uh, cities, you know, because we don't. Have they, has there ever been a race rained out at California Speedway? Not that I know. I don't of. think it's so. Back east. Right. Uh, I always wonder when they move those things to Monday, how many people are still there. I know. That's, I don't know. Probably not nearly as many people. It would be a shame. I, I'm very excited uh, about uh, California Speedway and the, the new NASCAR season. Oh, definitely, especially with the car tomorrow. It's making the cars a lot more quicker and uh, together. And uh, it's a very awesome uh, Daytona 500 race, too. Very close. Kind of boring there for a while, no cautions until towards the end. It got really exciting. So Good ending. 
And Matt Kenseth. Will you be the same way? Matt Kenseth has won the Auto Club three. Uh, the Auto Club is it the Auto Club three hundred? Yeah, five hundred. Auto Club five hundred. He's won it three times. Uh, he's won two times in a row. He's trying for three in a row, I guess. That's right. So I'm very excited about it. Um, I watch NASCAR at at least part of my weekend every weekend, if not the, if it isn't on all the time. Uh, sometimes it makes good background. It's like having it on. Sometimes with TiVo, that's the best way to watch it because if if you're not looking at the screen and something happens, yep. you can roll back and see what it was. Especially in HD. And uh, have you seen uh, the Hot Pass, the uh, DirecTV uh, service yet for NASCAR? Yes, I have, as a matter of fact. Fantastic. Nice. Uh, you pick a driver. If you haven't seen this, NASCAR has this uh, uh, this feature called Hot Pass. If you have DirecTV, it's, uh, uh, it's a pay-per-view feature. And uh, you can pick one of six drivers. They, they follow them, and they follow that one driver on each channel completely. They just follow one car. They have cameras inside the vehicle. They have cameras looking forward, cameras looking backward from the vehicle. You can hear the actual uh, chatter between the pit crew and the driver. Incredible. It's, it's amazing stuff. And, uh, uh, you know, it's HDTV and this kind of technology that have sucked me into NASCAR, and now there's no coming out. Yep, I know. It's nice that because they used to just have that on the internet. Now it's great that they actually have a channel for it now, which is incredible. Oh, so I have a speed channel. We have it here in the studio uh, frequently. It's on here in the studio, and uh, uh, all day tomorrow they can have all the preparations for the race and uh, everything leading up to uh, uh, the uh, Sprint Cup race. It's going to be very exciting. It will be. Thank you so much, Tom. Uh, take me out Earnhardt style, huh? <laughs> Dale Earnhardt style. Okay, here you go. It's very rare that a NASCAR fan asks for that. Usually, it's a NASCAR hater. Here's a NASCAR fan, which shows you how many years have passed since number three uh, bought the farm. <laughs> a NASCAR fan is asking for it now. Look how far we've come. 1-800-5-800-TOM is our telephone number. Matthew on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom. Matthew. Hello, sir. How are you? Do you care? I actually do. I'm doing great. That's good, man. I'm a location scout, dude, and it really breaks my heart that you're uh, you're telling people to uh, you're going to be sandblasting. You know what I'm saying? Why are you doing all that, Tom? Because I have a neighbor who is abusing the privilege of having film uh, production at his home, ah. Ra rather than having an occasional shoot. He has so turned how many his. Days are you talking in a year? Well, there have been twelve shoots since November. Hmm. This is February. Well, yeah, you know, I understand. It's going to get burned. What they do is, you know, they get a nice house, they get a nice neighborhood, they burn it out, and then uh, people like you or your neighbors and stuff like that, you know, like you said, you're going to be a vigilante, and then they're going to go away. Yeah, but don't don't. Can you see why we would? I know your living depends on ruining the lives of. <laughs> People would like to quietly enjoy their homes, but can you see it from the other perspective? I can understand, but at the same time, Tom, you live in the Hollywood Hills. That, that doesn't you know? mean anything. I, I yes, live. It does. No, I'm going to tell you what it means. It means I live on the street, the width of a driveway. It means that if there were a fire, fire vehicles, and by the way, we've had three fires in the Hollywood Hills in the past year. Uh, it means that a fire vehicle could not get to my residence. The illegally parked vehicles that block the fire hydrant, if a fire vehicle could get there, uh, will prevent somebody from hooking up to a hydrant and putting the fire out at well, my they house. Can't do that. They're not allowed to do that. They do so it. Much. It doesn't matter what they're allowed to do. It's the Wild West. They can put anything they want in the permit. They can say the laws, anything they want to say. But when it, when it gets down to the actual filming, now I've been through 12 of these. Right. <laughs> when it gets down to the days it's actually happening, there's nobody enforcing the rules. You know what, dude? I'm the I'm that guy. I'm the guy out there that's supposed to enforce the rules. And you know, what? I'm not going to lie to you. I've done it before. We've all done it before. But at the same time, I mean, is anyone taking care of you? Are you getting compensated? Are you getting? I don't want to be compensated. That's the part. They offered compensation. Right. Here's what they offered. They offered me nine nights at the Four Seasons Hotel in Beverly Hills in in a one bedroom suite. Really? 
Yes. They also offered me, and I'm quoting them now, because it was kind of presumptuous. They offered me a diamond earrings for my quote unquote girlfriend. <laughs> and That's creative. Yeah, well here's the thing. In 2002, 2003, and 2004, I spent over $2 million renovating my home mm. so I could live in it. Right. Telling me I have to leave my home for nine days and live in a hotel, that's not compensation. That's punishment. Let me ask you something. Why don't they? I'll tell you what. I'll get them a suite at the Four Seasons, and they can go shoot there. <laughs> they don't allow filming at the Four Seasons. Nah, well, and, and you know what? <laughs> I'm not allowing filming on my street. I'm putting my foot down, and I'm telling everybody else to do the same. Can I ask you one thing? Um, do you think that your property value for your house would be as high as it is if it was not for the entertainment industry? Do, uh, I don't know whether it would or it wouldn't, but I'm not concerned about it since I have no plan on selling my house uh, in my lifetime. It's irrelevant. Well, you wouldn't have that prestige of the Hollywood Hills if it wasn't for the entertainment industry. Again, they, they, it has the prestige because there are movie studios right, in Burbank and Hollywood and Culver right. City where movies are made. And there are bars and nightclubs and restaurants where celebrities uh, eat, drink, and hook up. Okay, yeah. uh, It does not have the prestige... Because people like you roaming strange neighborhoods with clipboards and leaving garbage on people's front lawns and illegally parking your cars and trucks all over the place uh, make our lives a living hell. That is not you know, what gives my home and my neighborhood prestige. Well, you know, I mean, you can't say that all of them are like that. I, mean, I didn't I say all of them are like that. I didn't say all of them are like that. Right. But no. enough of them are like that that I, I'm, I'm done. I'm drawing a line in the sand. You know, I understand, dude. You know, I just, I, I understand. It makes sense. I My neighbor you. is now, by the way, you know, I understand once in a while when a movie company comes to a neighborhood, finds somebody's house and says, do you mind if we film here? And the people get very excited and they take their thirty, right. forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 or whatever it ends up being. And right. they let the movie, uh, the film company take over the house, do do a shoot there. I, and, and I wouldn't get in the way of anybody who, who wants, who has that opportunity. But when you have a neighbor who is running ads in daily variety with pictures of his house now available for filming like it's an abandoned bank or an no. abandoned movie theater or an abandoned coffee shop like that Johnny's Coffee Shop at the corner of uh, Fairfax and Wilshire Boulevard. Right, right. It's being exactly. advertised as being available and they have applied for a flurry. That's the quote from the people at Film LA, a flurry of permits. Right. We are not talking about an occasional uh, reality show or an occasional TV commercial. The the house across the street from me has turned into a full fledged production facility. Well, you know what? It sounds like he's making it into business. I'm not sure if you know this, but the first 14 days are tax free. After 14 days, then he starts getting taxed for the whole year. So he must be making a lot of money in order to even go over 14 days. A lot of people just go 14 days and they cut it off so they don't get taxed. Right. But you know. Yeah, it sucks, dude, but... We're well, right. and so so the result is... Yeah, and here's the thing, Matthew. I'm a member of SAG. My studio, I'm talking to you right now, from one of the biggest movie lots in, in Southern California and the biggest working studio in Hollywood. <laughs> you said it, I didn't. Uh, Could be anywhere. Yeah. The, the point I'm making to you is that I'm very familiar with the film industry and I know mm -hmm. many people who work in it. But you took someone who in the beginning was very amenable and neighborly and said that no problem. If you guys want to film, that's fine. I signed the little survey form, said it was okay with me. And now you've turned me into a vigilante by uh, abusing my goodwill. I just, it just sounded so malicious, man. I you know, just, well, you know, yeah, you know what's malicious? Good. You, if, I'm going to post a picture. I don't have it with me today. I'm going to post a picture on our website. Of one of the arrogant morons who was parked outside my house today, illegally, right. eating Cheetos and waving at the camera. <laughs> Teamsters. Well, whoever it was, uh, we're gonna, he's going to become famous along with his license plate. Now, we're going to put that right on my website so people can see what's going on out there. Oh, and then you dude. tell me if you think I'm being malicious. The Tom Likas Show.